In this video, we will learn how to create a new action. Let's first understand the use case. We have a human resources application that allows us to create new employees. So let's say we want to create a new create EMP action and add it to our connector. The HR application has a REST API to create this employee. The API uses basic authentication. To create an employee, we need to provide the first name, the last name, the gender, the birth date and an optional ethnicity. If creation of the user was successful, we will get back the employee ID from the service. To create an action, we use the symphony add action command. In this case, we are passing in the create EMP as the name of the action. This will result in creation of a new folder for the action and an index.js file and an action.json file. We would like the GUI to look as follows. We can see that it requires a connection, a first name, last name, both, which, both of which are required. It requires a gender and the birth date. We can see that the birth date has a date picker and the ethnicity. When this action is connected to another action on the flow canvas, we can see that the following action will have the in outputs of the previous action rendered as inputs. In this case, we can see that the output of the create EMP action is a new JSON object, which has the properties employee ID, the first name and the last name. Let's take a look at how we specify the schemas for, these, for this action. To specify the schema, we need to populate the input property. We can see that the input property has a title employee details. This is the name of the form. Its data type is object. It can have a number of properties. The connection is a reserved property and we need to specify the name of the connection. In this case, we are specifying that the connection name is test basic. This is one of the connections we created in a previous video. First name, last name are both required properties as specified by the min length property. We provide a description which gets displayed on the uh, GUI. Uh, gender is a special kind of property. It uh, has an enum value. It has another property called enum names. Enum names are the values that are displayed on the screen while the code always deals with uh, the values from the enum property. Birth date uh, is of type string. However, the format is date. Hence, uh, this particular field will have a date picker associated with it. The output uh, is very is uh, specified in a similar way. Now, let's take a look at how to write the code for a particular action. We should always start off by adding a logger or creating a logger. Uh, the logger is provided by the PTC Symphony SDK and you provide the name of uh, the particular action. We should include any other libraries that are required for uh, implementing the action. In this particular case, we see that we are using the request promise library. Every action must export a function object which contains the execute method with the contractor specified below. Input is a JSON object and in addition to the fields from the form, it also contains the information about the connection. Output is a callback method which follows the node's uh, error convention. So the first parameter is an error object and the second parameter is the actual data. In this case, since no error has occurred, we are passing in null as the first parameter and the output data as the result. Now let's see how to implement the create EMP action. We can see that we started off by including the request promise library and then included the logger and we have specified the name of the action. Inside the execute function, we will first validate the input. If the input is invalid, we should return an error back to the application. Then we define an object, options object. We are going to use the post method to make the request. We have specified the URL that the request needs to be made to. If any query string parameters are to be provided, they should be provided via the QS property. Headers are to be provided as shown. 
if instead of basic authentication we were to use OAuth, we would provide it as a bearer token, then we actually make the request. And since we have specified that the output is a JSON, the data object will be a JavaScript object. We can do some amount of post processing on it and then return back the output. So that is all that is required to create a new action. Now let's take a look at the next steps. The next step, we would deploy this action to the server using the symphony deploy command. You should take a look at the connector SDK documentation to find out how to do it. You will also find more information of about the different types of data types and formats within the guide. You should always write unit tests and integration tests. The PTC Symphony test helper will uh, help you in writing good integration tests. You can also test the action interactively using the Symphony test, test action command.